wonderful tonight, except for you, Nicholas Cage. Um, <laughs> and I don't mean that in like a violent way. I just hope like he has like the hot runs or something. I don't like him, but I don't. You know what I mean? I I can't stand them, but I don't want him like get physically hurt. I'm not that type of person, guys. I just want to stop acting. So if he has the runs enough to where like you know he has to be in the bathroom a lot, but not too much to where it's kind of like dehydrate him and he, you know. Ends up on Jason's wall. <laughs> well, he's, out, he's, huh? he's definitely got the I gotta take a shit face. Shit, he has a lot more than that. I can't act. I don't know how I'm getting roles. He can and act. so on and so forth. But before I talk more shit about Nicolas Cage, guys, I want to let you guys know what we will be discussing tonight, along with a bunch of random shit as usual. We have the live review of my special boy. Friday the 13th fan film. Link is in the description. So go check it out. No matter how what we say about it, I still say go check out these Friday the 13th fan films. And there's going to be some more fan films being reviewed in the near future, guys. So check those ones out as well. <laughs> Excuse me. But Jason, it's been a while, my friend. How you been? How's it going? Been moving. Moving is awful. I hate moving. I hate everything about moving. Uh, our new place is dope, though. We have much bigger rooms. Uh, the basement is off the hook. We got a projector and stuff. We're going to slip down there. My daughter and I just got this, like, U-shaped couch. We're super excited about it. But, um, That's awesome. yeah, man, just been doing that moving thing. So I, I haven't been on here in, like, two weeks. It's Three been weeks. a while. It's been it's a while since I podcasted, and I've missed this outlet. Like, I dropped a short today on my YouTube channel saying that I think the Omen 2 is better than the Omen 1, so I'm expecting to get a lot of hate out of that. <laughs> Did you do it just to get the hate? No, I liked Omen 2 a lot. There's a scene in that movie that I think is better than any scene in the Omen 1, and that is where Damien first finds out that he is the Antichrist, and he has that moment of, like, why? I really mm-hmm. dug that moment in that movie. And granted, you know, he gets over it very quickly, but I still really dug that. Nice. Are you all all packed or all packed? All un <laughs> all unpacked now, or you still got some more? Oh, I still got some more, man. The basement is a mess of boxes. Mostly movies. Like all my DVDs and VHS tapes have not been unboxed yet. Oh wow. And I got about eight hundred DVDs and about two hundred VHS tapes still. My Blu-rays were unboxed day one. <laughs> He's like, I gotta get this, this listen. You're doing it by quality of <laughs> the look, the visuals. So next, That's right, man. The DVDs and VHS. As much as we it. love you, you got to be last. If he's That's doing it, that works. I remember moving. It's like you want to be organized. You want to. You want to label boxes: dining room, kitchen, bathroom, bedroom. But once it just doesn't happen that way. You just start moving boxes into any room that you can get into your new place. And then you just have to just kind of comb through and sift through and all that bullshit. It's yeah, that's you. You know, what's funny about that is like me and my wife had this conversation. I'll bring it up here and there. Like we'll both bring it up here and there and we'll do it sometimes. But it's like we should just grab some totes and little by little, like stuff we know we're going to keep for whatever reason, if it's movies, whatever it is, and we're not using at the time, let's just grab some totes, start packing them now, and just label it. I know we're not moving for a few years, but at least that shit will be packed, labeled, and it's like, it's hard not to add new shit to it, but at the very least, you're like, okay, this stuff is already packed up, blah, 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 and, you know, haven't done it, haven't done it. Jason, I haven't talked to you in a while. I think I told you and make this in the group chat, but if not, I'm going to tell it to the live again. So Sunday, I had a very eventful day, <laughs> but I looked on the bright side of it all. I'll tell you why after I tell this little spiel. So get up, you know, went to the track Sunday on the way. Well, no, let me tell you this first. Go to my father's house. That's where I keep my car. <clears throat> Go to turn the car on. All you hear is click, 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 click. Fuck, battery's dead. <laughs> had to get a battery for it. This was at... This was 8 in the morning. I was running late. Like, I planned on being on the track at 8 in the morning. At the track at 8 in the morning, but I was running late. And I guess this is, the, this is why. I, and I thought about it. I was frustrated, a little frustrated with myself that I was running late. But this is why I was running late. It ended up being a good thing. So, battery's dead in the car. I had to go grab a new battery. Called a, I called two places. 
I think Advanced Auto, not a sponsor, but definitely can be. And I can definitely use some car parts and all that other good shit. So you definitely can be a sponsor of Horror with Search 30 and Racing with Search 30. Be on the lookout for that. Um, and then you all the parts. I'm not I'm not tied down to just one or whatever. Whoever hits me up first, you know, and they can just, just give me a fucking thousand dollar gift card and I'll give you a couple shout outs. <laughs> Back to what I back to the story though. So, anyways, I go get a new battery. I take the uh, it's a side terminal battery, so I take the bolts off, and <clears throat> they're fucking shot. They're stripped, so I have to go get new terminal bolts. Go back up there, grab that, put that on, get the car all ready and go. Good. Go up there, race. Later in the day, get a phone call from the wife. Fucking pipes burst in the basement. <laughs> Lucky for me, I lost in the first round already, so I didn't have to make like one of them things like, oh shit, I won the first <laughs> round, second round's about to be up, I'm finally winning a round, or say I won a round or two, I'm finally winning some rounds, and then this shit happens. But uh, yeah, so I, I lost in the first round, so I didn't have to make that, that the you know, the devil sturdy and the good sturdy coming on my shoulders, like, listen man, you don't know if you're ever going to make this round again, <laughs> but you should probably get home and do the right thing. All that other shit. Didn't need to go through that. Um, so went home. By the time I got home, she had already got the water cut off. Got a hold of the landlord. Plumber came Monday morning, took care of the problem. Plumber also pointed out, he was like, listen, we're galvanized stuff, get that changed as soon as you can. I'll tell your landlord, but this this hot water heater is get that shit changed ASAP. I'll tell your landlord. So that's why I look at the bright side of all of it. The what hot water heater. Those and the water, as far as pipes bursting, the hot water you didn't burst yet. But as far as pipes bursting, that usually people, when you hear those stories, it's always at like two in the morning when everybody's sleeping or, or nobody's home at all. So the wife was home for that. And the battery being dead, it was dead in the driveway. <laughs> so I can't be mad at that at all. I'd rather be dead there than die at the track or whatever the case may be. So again, look at the bright side for that. And I took care of a problem. That battery was in that car since 2012. So that's 11 years on that fucking battery. <laughs> so. That's a long fucking time for a battery. For those of you who have vehicles, you know them shits last maybe six years max. That damn near doubled. I know I don't drive the car all the time, but still, that doesn't even matter. <laughs> so, yeah, but you got to look at the positives and shit. Like, stupid shit like that happens. Shit happens. Got to figure out, hey, other stuff's going to get taken care of for it. And now I'm here to tell that story and complain about it and laugh about it now. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I was pissed when I turned that key. I was like, Fuck! <laughs> It's going to happen now. You're going to be blessed with Victory Lane this come with Sunday. There we go. That's, yeah, it's all, you that, all that good juju, all that good karma is going to come back to you. It better. It better. I do want to say one more thing about moving because my dog was getting loud. Oh, so no, I stopped ahead. talking about it. But uh, I'm a huge proponent, proponent of um, physical media. I love physical media. Yes. But there was a moment when I had a breakdown when I was moving where I'm like, I should just get rid of all of this because this is <laughs> awful. Because <laughs> uh, a box of DVDs that are unopened, right? It's happy. What's yes, 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 yes. It is. Man. Yes, the hell it is. Let's just have a bonfire. What's what good? Where's Dan? What up? What up, Wedgie? What's happening? What's happening? What up? What's good, man? What's good? How's it going? How's it going, Dove? What up, Dove? As How's matter of fact, Dove, listen. Um, the other side of the pond, doing. <laughs> I know you got a couple of shorts out because I know you're promoting the third movie of it, but the first two, I need the links to those, man, because I want to review them. I want to get you on here for an interview. Um, I know you're across the pond, so we could set it up. Not this Friday, but we could set up for a Friday, a late night, where you know I do my late night shows on Fridays as well to make it easier for the both of us around like midnight-ish, 1 o'clock in the morning at the latest, let's say, start time, Eastern time, and kind of go from there. <laughs> cool with that. Let me know. And because uh, I'm really trying to like focus on you indie movie creators and all that the content creator well movies and all that stuff come on here for an interview slash review and all that fun shit so yeah let's make yeah, it cause it's like what 9 a.m for him right now i think he's uh like australia or something i think I he's way across i think he's way across the pond like yeah he's 12, 12 hours if he's in new zealand australia yeah where are you again dove i forgot man i forgot but uh what's good with you worst damn how's everything going with you Good, just keeping busy. I was in the middle of finishing up dinner while running back, finishing the movie, and just got literally just got back with my girl. So I 
20 minutes to fucking get dinner together, finish watching the last 20 minutes of the movie, and fucking get my shit all set up again. This guy. This guy. You know, it's how we do. It, it is. It is at times. At times. I was just feeling Jason in my, on my, uh, my lovely Sunday. He Actually, he was at the track when I got the phone call. Wow. <laughs> He was sitting right on the bleachers. Like it was him. It was I was sitting next to my father. My brother was sitting next to me. My nephew was sitting here, and then just a bunch of the guys. And I think Chris was sitting in front of everybody and now, next yeah. to somebody. Yeah, he was our uh, Puerto Rican savior. He was protecting all the black guys behind him. That's why he was. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. He, was a, he was the tallest guy there. That's what you do. <laughs> there was but, a lot uh, bigger than me, though. They were some of them were a lot bigger than me. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> but. uh yeah, so he heard that. I was like, what the hell? And I was I was trying because she like video called me on you know with Messenger and I was trying to put it so I could put it on my ear, <laughs> but that didn't work. <laughs> so when I come back up, everything goes, Every, everything okay? I was like, yeah, fucking pipe burst in the basement, so I gotta go home now. <laughs> but I will this be back. Oh, oh, so here's the funny part. I don't know if you heard Reggie say this. He was like, Yeah, he's like, You lucked out, he just saved you from that ass whooping. <laughs> I was like, Yo, I'll be here next week. Because earlier in that day, my nephew, my brother was race, racing. We both lost in the first round. We were racing two different classes. Besides uh-huh. So my nephew was talking to both, was talking to me at first. He's like, oh, you guys should race today. And he looked at his dad. He was like, don't you want a grudge run? He was like, grudge run who? And I was like, you're looking at him. <laughs> and I forgot what he said. There was a lot of cars there. there was like, oh, he, forgot. he was like, I would, but there's a lot of cars. There was like 300 cars there Sunday. There was yeah, it was a lot. There was, was a lot. lot. So we probably wouldn't have been able to do it. Just because there were so many damn cars, but uh, I'm I'm I've only time. I've only gone through like six hours of the footage so far. <laughs> you didn't even get to me yet. I got I got like six more to go, seven more to go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Lovely time. I can't wait to see them videos drop. Well, I, I sent them to him, so hopefully. Oh well, your shit, yeah. I got. I say I got to do that, but now that that shit's done, that's gonna be the focus. All the extra fun shit. I was gonna, yeah, that's what I meant with the fun shit, like the guys' cars and stuff. Yeah, that's the stuff I can't wait for. Those and those pictures and shit. That yo, that one that you did a John's car. His son loves oh, that. I shit. I got some. I got a couple of that car. That's a beautiful car, yo. I got it doing a wheelie stand. Nice. I got it leaving fucking hard as fuck. I got the tire crumple and everything. Oh man, I can't. I can't see. wait to slow it down. I cannot <laughs> wait to fucking slow that shit down and just watch it. Yo, <laughs> if Reggie's racing Sunday, I hope you get him on camera this time. I didn't even know he was running. So I'm after in. after I parked in the pits, right, and by the time I finally made my way up there, I walk out to the I walk out to the track. I see. My brother's Camaro in lane two. I'm like, I think it's his car, but I'm not sure. But I'm like, it's the only car that third gen Camaro that's about that color. And this motherfucker's racing. I didn't know he was running. I had no idea where Chris, like I'm looking around for Chris, nowhere near the trash. I'm like, what the fuck? Where is he? I was probably getting food or fucking in the pits, fucking getting other footage, talking to somebody. And then by the time I see you, I was like, oh, Reggie ran. I was like, you're like, what? I was like, just a little bit. Of show. I was like, I didn't even know he was racing. They're like oh shit, and then not a little later on that day, my brother was like, "Yo, did you get my my camera? Like, did you get my car on the camera?" <laughs> Chris was like, "Nah, man. Like, I even see." <laughs> uh, what kind of car was it? Because I might have and not even realized. No, nah, you weren't by the you weren't by the track then. It's a Camaro, third gen Camaro. Looks just like basically same similar body style to my car, but like an orange, like a. Uh, Burnt orange. I don't fucking know what kind like of. I, said, I, I right still now. got six hours worth of footage to go to, so maybe I saw him rolling by to get in line or something. But when I was down on the other end, maybe. <clears throat> but what was funny was, but he, <laughs> it was your fault for not knowing that he was racing that day, even though he didn't tell you he was racing that day because you didn't get his car. I was dying. <laughs> You're like, well, whose fault is that? He was like, yours. I just walked away laughing. What the fuck? Oh man. Anybody who's never been to a drag strip, though, if you get a chance to go, you should definitely go at least once. It's well, well worth it. And now we're going to start talking about this wonderful film, or not so wonderful film. We'll see how everybody feels about it. Wow. Here we are. Again, just in case you guys forgot, we are reviewing My Special Boy, our Friday the 13th fan film. My Special, Special Boy. That said... Let's jump into early reviews. No reason. 
I'm giving this one a six and a half. I think nice. it's fair. I think it's fair. Nice, nice. All right, so early rating, I give it a six. Okay. Six okay. hockey mask with a with a nice little Jason pop. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um three. <gasps> That's being generous. Matter of fact, I'm lying. Two. That's a sturdy rating. You never know what you're going to get. It's like a box of chocolates. I'm the guy that loves everything on Three Geeks, and Mick teases me about loving everything. But I agree with you, Sturdy. I'm going to give it the same. See, I, I had him go last only because I thought his rating was going to be more, worse than mine. I thought, you know what I mean? No, because, listen. Um, actually, I'm going to give it a three because they did something I couldn't. I couldn't do. They did. They made the movie. Like they, they went out. They took the time. They put it together. They, they did something that I would love to do, but I'm never going to do. So anybody who, you know, tries and puts something out there, you know, they always get the benefit of the doubt because they took the time to make it. I mean, I'll give them the credit. I'm just switching you guys around just because of how my logo's up there in the corner. It's kind of black and inside off. Um, I uh. I give them credit for doing it. Don't get me wrong. And again, you guys know my uh, sturdy scale. Hmm. This thing right here, I got to do a little voiceover that for that to have it pop up. Huh? Hmm. That'd be nice. But anyway, but this here, you know, I go from a negative ten to a positive ten. Dadpool, thank you for making that, by the way. And a two is not bad on my rating scale. I mean, it is and it's not. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's still kind of credible. Oh, that makes my three even worse than your two, technically. But, but <laughs> I didn't know the negative numbers were a thing. But, well, well, no, because you the, I, that's the sturdy scale. That's just the sturdy scale. You don't have to go by the sturdy scale. You can go by your own. I know most I people go know, from man. one to ten or zero to ten. I I'd just like use dirty. Numbers. I'd feel dirty giving a movie a negative number because, again, Shit. they did it. You know what I mean? They did it. They did it. They did it. They tried. Yes. They tried, Yes. But there's some that are just so bad. It's just like, why? Fuck this. This movie sucks. I want to own the rights to it. But it's... I hate it. Which, speaking of which, speaking of which, before we go any further, someone does have a nice rating for it. I'm going to actually let him go full screen for this. Ooh, full screen. Say what? Ooh. All right. Just so right here has his rating for Blood Lake. So Blood Lake. Uh, I'll give it a quick little, like, synopsis of what I thought in my rating. I don't understand why you guys hate it. Like, I get it. it. It's got that after school vibe, you know, tone to it and the way it's shot. I mean, I'll give it, I'm going to give it a five because, like I said, I'm not mad at it. Like, I couldn't find anything that really hate other than, like, the way it was shot. The ending was a little, was a little rough. I, I don't know. I, I don't. I, mean, I don't see it being a negative ten, bro. Like I can't. I can't see it being anything that I've seen worse. And I'm gonna. I'm gonna hit you up with the worst. But I, I give it a five just because they they put together something. They 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 got behind the camera. They filmed it. But at the time for being eighty seven, like I can't be mad at it. If it was like this and it was twenty twenty two and it was this bad, then maybe it might be a zero. But I'm gonna give it a five. Interesting. I'll give it a five. That's the most ridiculous shit I ever heard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And, and, and he's hurt his own rating sometimes. I can tell you a movie that's worse than that. Rumble Stillskin. Okay. I don't think it is. But uh Have when you seen that Rumpelstiltskin when, when when that um Have I what? Have you seen Rumple Stiltskin? Probably not. Not to my recollection, at least. We'll see. There you go. But you should watch it. I, 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 no, no. Because the, the story's not elves. Doing it. Or <laughs> elves. Elves is bad too. I seen elves. That I, Blood Lake was way worse than elves. Elves had a dope cover, but it was a dis. It was a big disappointment. Exactly. Yeah, it was a huge disappointment. I actually reviewed that a couple Christmases ago. But uh, anyway, Jason, I am going, I'm in the process of, by the process of, I mean, I ain't even started yet. I'm just talking about it. I've been talking about it for the past couple of weeks, but I am going to do it. Uh, Patreon, 
first level. Oh shit. Is Sorry. it worse than Blood Blood Lake Battle? I have a name for it. I have it saved. But uh basically come on there, your horror movie, you think it's worse than Blood Lake. You have to watch Blood Lake, and I need proof that you actually watched the movie, of course. And you I'll you send me tell me the movie or send me the movie whatever. I'll watch it. And uh it'll be a review with me and whoever, say if it's me and you, Jason, or me and Dadpool over on the Patreon. Of course you'd be a Patreon to do this. But it'll be over on the Patreon, and then if you win, you win a shirt and a mug. And if you lose, no, you just lose. You don't lose anything. Credibility with me with bad movies, that's that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> but I've had, uh, the funny thing is, is our friend Sean, <sighs> shout out to Sean, um, he came on before he watched Blood Lake, and he was so, like, you could ask James, I think Worst Dan was there for this too. He was so confident that he had like four or five movies guaranteed worse than Blood Lake before he watched it. Yo, he came on the episode, the next episode, and apologized. He was like, "Yo, Sturdy, I'm fucking sorry, man." <laughs> it was like, who was this, Mick? Was, no, not not Mick. Uh, Sean. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Remember yeah. when Sean was like, "I had like four or five movies definitely worse than this movie yeah. before he even watched it." After he watched it, he was like, "Yo, I, I'm sorry, Sturdy." He was like, "I was absolutely." But how do you not wrong. give at least a negative nine ahead of Trans that was a pretty yeah, sweet car. It was pulling a boat, and I didn't I like mean, the way he, it, I didn't. It's it still it, it. That's why I finished the movies because I thought I was going to see the car more. <laughs> this guy, <laughs> but no. Had a Trans Am pulling some big ass, ugly ass boat that it shouldn't have been pulling. That's for trucks or ugly cars, not for a, a beautiful Firebird like that. I mean, they got torque. Yeah, but that, nah, that's not. Right, so for my special boy. Uh, I'm sorry to anybody like involved with this movie if they watch this, but I felt like I was watching a reenactment from the 90s, like reenacting what happened. I felt like this was bullshit. Camp Crystal Lake. <laughs> ah, what's up, Mick? What's didn't have didn't have enough dicks in it. That's why Mick didn't like it. Oh, oh didn't have any. <laughs> I, I, I feel bad. I, I railroaded uh, Jason's whole review. <laughs> it's uh, it's just. I, bad acting. It's one of the reasons I didn't like uh, Blood Lake. I can't. I can't. I can't. Like uh, one of the things I liked about Vengeance and Never Hike in the Woods is not, not saying they're gonna win Oscars or anything. I'm just saying like the acting was so bad in this that it's hard, <laughs> really hard to watch. Never Hike in the Voorhees while Vengeance is on the loose or whatever, whatever movie we're watching. Ah, that'd be a nice <laughs> remix. Yeah. A boy called Voorhees who hikes in the woods alone. <laughs> Seeking no, I vengeance. Was, I There's felt like, like I was watching a reenactment on Cold Case Files or something. <laughs> <laughs> that acting is not that bad really? on Cold Case Files and all those. It's it's not believable, but it's something out there. It's it's insane. Like, the acting in those are better. Oh <laughs> so you're saying it was that it was yeah. And you guys know me, like people that watch anything I do, like I like everything. Like there's hardly there's a small like percentage of movies i dislike it's true and the only reason i watched this whole movie is because jason Voorhees was in it like uh blood lake i only made it like 15 minutes into it because the acting in that was just on another level of bad (laughs) but but you only watched 15 minutes of blood lake yeah i I can't oh dude you should wear a sign when you're on this show then (laughs) you should have to wear a sign we watched that movie Multiple times, Twice all the way through. You didn't even watch Twice the boat me. scene. I don't and, my and, that and, and here's the, here's here, here's the kicker <laughs> too. Here's the bad thing too, which I know I'm gonna end up having to do just to get like a refresher. <clears throat> even if I just have it on like a background thing, is when this Patreon shit starts, I have to really go back and watch that movie to get those horrible feelings back. At least once. You secretly every- like it. I don't. I have I not done like- a show with you where we have not talked about Blood Lake. He's, Jason, he's a movie master. Jason's right. Jason's right. This is Sturdy's it's, favorite movie of all time. It's Blood Lake it's, it's, and Cocaine Bear. Like I think you oh, I love Cocaine those Bear and repeat. and Thanks or uh, Thanks Killing. Yeah, but it's not November yet, Chris. It's oh not, my it's God, not, it's not that's okay. He said favorite movie, so I'm making sure it's there. <clears throat> well, Blood can Lake we is buy the rights? Yet. Can we I buy the want... rights to Blood Lake and then make a sequel called Blood Lake Two: C- Cocaine Bear? <laughs> we could do whatever we want after that. Just remake it. It's just a remake. It's but called Cocaine Lake. No, 
But you got the bear in there. You got to have the bear in there. Why not? Mick just wants to fight a bear so fucking bad, guys. But, fucking coked out trout attacking just, swimmers just, just your coming on the, the beach day, and eating their ankles. Your post the other day had me laughing when you were talking about there's a bear in the neighborhood and you you're just, you said something about going out there to fight it. Your son was I'm just fucked. like, I'll do anything to make that happen. I'm just like, wow. I am I am screwed for life. This is going to happen. I thought this was going to be a funny joke when it started. <laughs> and it just keeps recurring. It's like the Blood Lake on this show. Deadpool's yeah. already started writing the script. He's got the title, the byline, Deadpool's and the writing. scene for the first fucking, like, mm -hmm. what it's going to look like. I saw him writing. I saw him writing. I don't mean to take <laughs> over your show, Sturdy, but I, I um, as somebody who likes to debate movies, I, I know Deadpool liked this obviously more than I did. And I'm curious to find out why. Like, what <laughs> was it about the I'm movie? I'm curious, too. <laughs> why, I liked, Deadpool. why I liked My Special Boy? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I really dug... Like I, I wrote notes from the story. I dug the Elias and Pamela. Like that was a cool something that we really don't see thoroughly in the Hollywood movies. Um, I thought G uh, Gia Rose played a, a nice Pamela, and Chad Summer played a great Elias. Uh, she was the shining light of the movie. I, and I, I, agree with and I thought go even going towards the end with with the scenes with Pamela when Jason's looking at her. Her, shri her shrine <clears throat> like just her coming and just always being over his shoulder and his reaction like a like a little puppy you know yes mom pet my head like it was just that was a touching moment like i can't believe that sturdy gave us the two and he gave no man's land a two and we couldn't even watch no man's land because you couldn't even see the movie it was so damn dark <laughs> at least with this movie that i thought the camera uh, the, the background it was at a camp Again, which is a plus to some of these fan films. I thought the cinematography looked great. Yup. Yes, the acting was bad. Like this whole scene with the whole cocaine stone in the lines and that whole like punk rock <clears throat> could have been without. Weird. Didn't yeah, didn't. But if you take that out, this is a good out. And then the the post credits, like the yep. post credits scene was good too. I didn't even know there was a post credit scene. scene. You didn't know the yeah, post credit. Oh, yeah. I guess you got to watch because there was like a post credit eight minutes scene. or six minutes left after the fucking credits. No, oh, I didn't even know that. I thought it was just a long ass credits. I didn't know. I was like, all right. And we got on we got on camera kills as opposed mm -hmm. to No Man's Land. Like I'm going to compare yep. the No Man's Land because you gave that too as well. We got on screen kills. They were practical. They were they were not over the top. Um, I can go on and on why this movie's. Better hmm. than than No Man's Land. So, uh, I, do you want more positive to come out of? Because I gave this a six and a half, and I, I got shit I could say too to follow up with DP. But do you want to go good, mm. bad, good, bad? Make the sandwich like we're in the corporate world <laughs> over here. It okay, but I'm arguing for Weed Wolf. <laughs> Chris, I'm kidding. I love you. It's a full moon out tonight. Let's see the weed. <laughs> Burn your ass. No, I. Listen, <laughs> I feel bad because I didn't. I thirty. I want. I felt bad because I didn't uh, get a chance to come on. Uh, you know, because I wasn't. Gonna, I was driving. I'm high. Don't get me wrong. I took gummies before I jumped on. Nice. But I will say this: I didn't get a chance to watch the movie, so I have no idea what's going nice. on. This I was gonna movie, watch it when you sent it to me, but I was like, I'll watch it before the show, and then I had to leave. You you won't want to. I'm not gonna tell you not to watch it because I'm never gonna tell somebody not to watch a movie, especially a fan film. So I was like, definitely check it out, and uh, it's better than Blood Lake. I'll say that. It's, it's got it's got good ideas, and like he said, Pamela was a, um, a shining light in this movie for sure. And I would like to see more of the Pamela El Elias. Um, story relationship played out just absolutely done better you know what bugs me about can i go on a rant for a second is it okay yeah but i just want to say the jason in this sucked what? i didn't like anything about the jason at all i didn't like uh, the, feel? The, only I didn't like thing the that mood, sucked was feel it was just bad i know i, I came in late either. but jason didn't seem that bad when i came in no jason jason was i couldn't i didn't like him i didn't like his movements i it just bothered me that no he, come on he's just sitting Mm -mm. It's it was bad. He doesn't get the joke, Mick. <laughs> <laughs> I was on my my, my rant. He's of that. talking about that. Yeah, he's talking about him. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's good. 
<laughs> I was ball, pretending that you were talking about him. The bald Jason, he's 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 good for now. Well, the other Jason was bald too. Bald. <laughs> the bald one with glasses. Can we do a mix here of like hair bald, hair bald, hair bald right now? Like, <laughs> but well, one of I, I have hair back, so it's okay. Um, I do. I do say like keep either Jason or I in the corner up here, so that way like the logo doesn't block uh, Deadpool's face or Chris's face or anything. Yeah, I'm not worried about my face getting blocked. <laughs> Shut your face! It's a beautiful face. Ah. Yeah, you're the money on the stream right now. You're the reason nope. everybody's tuning in. Oh, <laughs> Here's the funny thing: you got this lighting. You got like this like Joe Rogan is angry lighting going on right now, but you're so mellow. <laughs> it's throwing me off. Like you got like a lava lamp in front of you and everything. I love the vibe. Oh no, it's the microphone. Yeah, that's the microphone. Yeah, I know, but it looks like a oh, lava like lamp. lamp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's perfect. Like, it's his style, Nick. It's his style. He's just chilling. I love yeah, it. I'm I'm going for the yeah. I got a green screen and the setup to do everything I want to do. Just not. That's a curtain it. now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a curtain. Right? I might wear it as a toga tomorrow. There's a party. Oh. <laughs> wouldn't put it past you. I wouldn't that way, when people you. take pictures of me at the place, I blend it. They can't go see back, it. They color me right out. Chris, go back there, put it on, and just be like, it's my invisibility cloak, and then just put it over your head. That may be a piece <laughs> of content. Thank you. <laughs> Boom. But, but getting back to Jason Voorhees in this movie, yeah. like, thank you. The only Sorry. thing that I didn't like about it is that there was one scene where he was running and then he was pacing. And then the running was the running was awkward. Yeah, he's just kind of, it kind of looks stiff. But to go from running to pacing to running again just didn't fit that whole scene. Other than the Jason look, I thought everything else was on point. I thought his his mask off the mask kind of gave you like that part fourish vibe. The way it looked, um, nice. I don't know. I just. I don't understand. I want to hear more from Sturdy why he gave it a two and, and Jason why he gave it a three for the simple fact other than just that they made the film. Because I feel like if if it was an AI film, it'd be much more, much worse. Like, help me understand these ratings because this movie wasn't that fucking bad. You, you will I've go seen worse the on this show. show. Bro, you we said go worse the on this show. Gym. <laughs> but listen, it, the, the, what really, really bothered me is about a Friday the Thirteenth movie is where Jason's one of the worst things about this movie. The look sucked. The movement was You're horrible. Bugging. I couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand See, it. I, I, I right. sadly, I hate he, to agree with Sturdy because we we rarely agree when he hates something. Like it never <laughs> happens. But um, I again, Jason, I was bored. I felt like I was watching bad um, re, recreate recreating like recreations like. Cold case files, like I, <laughs> and I was watching cold case files prior to watching this movie, and I'd rather watch the cold case files and the reenactments all day. Like I just, I'm a huge Friday the Thirteenth fan, and this mm -hmm. one just missed the mark for me. And again, I just can't get past the acting. The acting, and it was really bad. Okay. I could, but again, they did spoiling something spoiling I would never do. Out. They made a movie, so that I gave it a three out of ten. You, you, can't, you can't say you'll never do that because all you really need is a group of friends or something. Hey, let's, let's he means that anymore. He just doesn't. None talk of my about friends live in days. Columbus except for like three people. <laughs> <laughs> all my friends are on these streams. Hey, uh -huh. we, we could, there's something we could do through a stream as well. I just wrote a treatment. Let's do he it. Doesn't, he doesn't talk about his dorm gone wild days. Home. <laughs> <laughs> Sturdy, what we do on the stream stays between us. Remember? It. It's like Vegas out here. It's oh, the boy. strip. Get it? Uh, <laughs> that like, my God. God. <laughs> All right, listen. I can't fucking let this stay in and bottle up. You're bugging. You're bugging. You're cool. You're cool. Listen, okay? This Fuck you, about. <laughs> That's it. Like, done. All right, listen. The cinematography is definitely what supported this movie. The imagery that they portrayed, the visceralness of the Jason. Yes, he had those errors in the walk and the pacing and all that stuff like Deadpool said. But other than that, the way they framed him, the way they got the certain shots, he was fucking menacing. He looked big to me. And when he was chopping and just killing, it was fucking... That, that was... I feel like Jason X has a lot of the visceralness, but there's a lot of fast-paced killing where this was brutal visceral to me. And I was like, yo, that's fucking dope. This imagery was so good that it did. I'm not saying it, it, it 
completely uh, uh, appends the fucking bad acting in this. Not at all. The bad acting sucked, but that's one of the reasons why I gave it a six and a half. He gave it a six. It's because if the acting was better to us, this would have been probably an eight, nine movie because it think- looked beautiful. It was brutal. It was Jason in a new light and new way. It was just the acting that let this movie down. And that's it. Sound design was good and designation curation on it. I, I thought they did a great job. So, so I got a question. Like you gave vengeance a nine, right? If I remember mm-hmm. correctly. So mm-hmm. you think this is only two and a half spots below Vengeance? Because if I just said, if the acting was better in this, it'd be on par with, with the first Vengeance that I gave that eight, eight or nine. I disagree. I don't know where you saw the cinematography in this movie. It literally Bro, there was like a was lot of shots and the angles that they had of I, Jason's I gotta, face and how they switched certain things to back to the mother talking and like all that shit. It is so hard to do some of those scenes when she before when she starts starts to kill uh elias there on the porch and shit like that the shit they do the warp that ter- it was fucking dope i don't have I mean, a lot of like leg i shot in my here. backyard i don't have a lot of leg to stand well that doesn't matter uh i don't have a lot of leg to stand on here but i have been like while you guys are talking i have it on and i'm looking at it just see what it looks like see what jason looks like and stuff see what you guys are kind of talking about and i will tell you the cinematography is good in this and if you're especially comparatively to normal Ooh independent film short films that are low budget Mm -hmm. and and if you take it even further and you put it against horror shorts or horror uh even horror features that are independent Mm -hmm. you know i i this is this looks better than a lot of them i I can Um, give you one scene alone it's uh or one death it's levi's death he's like the arrogant prick and he's mm -hmm. got the little pocket flip mirror just, just to see that kill, and then you see Jason's POV for like a second, look, and then you look at the mirror, and you could just see Jason going at it, just going at it. Going. So for me, I'll say this: it was so hard. hard. Dirt was flying. He was chopping so hard into him. Dirt was flying with the so fucking the cinematography and some of the kills is why this movie was two for me. Everything else I didn't like about it, like. I can deal with bad acting, but again, when you're watching, for me, when I'm watching a Friday the 13th movie, it's one that Jason's in, as far as hockey mask Jason or sackhead Jason. I won't talk about the original video or, you know, stand from the original. But I need to see, when I see Jason, I need to get that feel that that's Jason. I did not get that from this this movie at all. I didn't get the feel of Jason. I got it from, I got it more so as like, not even the copycat like Roy from part five. It didn't even feel like that. It just felt like some dude just threw a mask on and decided to just, do shit. I'm really Bro, glad you guys like this movie, this, but to me, it just felt like another bald guy in a mask. Not well, Jason. It, honestly, this was the first time in a long time that I felt like, fuck, I could be scared of Jason in a, and he's in a movie and I know it's a movie and I'm like, man, like if that motherfucker was real and I was in that position, I'm fucked. Is there two what? versions of this movie online? Because I feel like I watched a different movie than you guys. I feel like you did too. Like, I think it's an unfair comparison to say Vengeance is a 10 and this is a 6. Vengeance budget was probably a thousand times more than this budget alone. But what they did with this budget and what they put out as a final product, acting, if the acting was better and a couple yep. scenes were a little uh, fixed and corrected, Sean getting bashed and bashed and bashed and he survives with no bruises at the end, that bugged me. Yeah. <laughs> But this is a six. This is a six. The, uh, Even on sturdy scale, this is a six. <laughs> Even with the sturdy scale, you say? Was, Even uh, with the sturdy scale, it's a six. What did you say? Yeah, the the uh, the the writing was not bad. The story was not bad. It was the delivery that was fucked up for me. Because again, if if just the portrayal and the delivery was better, again, I, I'd be like, yo, this is definitely on par with Vengeance. And and there's shots in here and techniques done that to me take more skill and attention to detail in the process that I'm like, yo, like I'd be hard pressed to kind of be like, nope, it's, it's kind of a little bit better. It's kind of a little bit better from like the, the artsy side of it to me. I, I, I mean, just from what I'm looking at and like with Jason and stuff, it looks like, it looks like he's modeled more after the remake mm. than he is the original, which I don't hate. I didn't mind the remake. Could like with the, what you were saying with the walking and the running, because I do see some of it in different clips that I'm looking at. Um, so, you know, I could see him modeled after that. Now, I don't know if that's the case because you said I haven't seen her, but you said Pamela shows up in this. Yeah. So I don't know which version of Pamela. 
you kind know. of the younger version, middle, because it's not like it's not the old, it's not the old lady Pamela. So Definitely. probably more like the remake then. That <clears throat> yeah. might be what not, they were basing not, this on. Well, not as young, but maybe, maybe. Well, she wasn't. I mean, not a visitor. She didn't uh, look, but she looked young. She looked really young. In the she movie. was, yeah. I mean, she looked younger than like Betsy Palmer mm-hmm. did in the original, but um, she still. I mean, she was she was still older, but yeah. for the most part, like looking at this, I don't know. I, I, I mean, again, I'd have to watch it to know if it's a good mm-hmm. movie or not. Is yeah, you really Jason? Are you in the a group chat with us? Uh, I don't think so. You want me to add him to that one? Could you? Just so I no. can send him. I'm like, now he's got me thinking. I'm like, yo, here's the link that I watched. Like, <laughs> no, no, no. He, he saw the right one because it was the same one Sturdy sent me, and that's the one we're looking at. My special boy. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I will add him by the way. But uh, if I could just ask two questions of you guys because you watched the movie and you guys are are big Friday Thirteen fans and stuff like that. One, walk Jason, run Jason. What do you prefer? Because he did run in a couple. He did run in yeah. the second one, mm-hmm. and he did run in the mm-hmm. remake. I want to say this too: the running does not bother me. It's just the way it looked in this movie. The way he mm-hmm. moved, his movements, I just hated. 100%. His body movements, I hated. And you guys know, I've been saying this throughout the whole Camping with Surge Thirty, and this is the last episode of Camping with Surge Thirty. And we're getting turned on to some other stuff, some interviews, and some other fun shit. So stay tuned. But um, <clears throat> how like the body movements of the Jason, I liked them in most of these films. And that really helped the rating because that right there is if, if you have to put for me, if you're watching, you know, Friday the 13th, Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street, like a fan film of those, you have to portray those three icons very, very I well. Was, they hmm. don't have to look exactly like the ones. Of course, they could have their own twist to it, but you have to really knock that shit, especially if you make if you try to do your own twist to it. Like if you do your own twist, to it, you really have to knock it out of the park. You really have to knock it out of the park or else it's going to just pull. Well, I'll, I'll say for it's going to pull me out of it. And it, this movie really pulled me out of it. I didn't like it. So what something. I'm hearing then is that in order for it to be something that you're going to like in a Jason rendition, there has to be some type of nostalgia link to the walks of some of the prior ones that you like. No, it just has to be good. It has to be. It has to make me feel like it's Jason. Make me feel like it's it's threatening. See, you know what I mean? It, I didn't what, feel threatened by this Jason at all. What this should have been. What this should have <laughs> been done, like with you. Is seeing Vengeance and uh, Vengeance Two and Rosebud so early on? You had this image in your head of what it has to look like already. So when when we start to see the the movies that are less lesser than the Vengeances and the Rosebuds and even the Never Hike Alones, you're comp- I think you're unfairly comparing it to those movies. Where I like I said, this was this a perfect movie? No. Was it better than some of the other ones that we've seen? Yes. Is it as good as Vengeance? That, that's it's, not it's, fair. It's, it's a couple notches close. below, yeah, it's but it's close. not as it's not as bad as and I'll call them out. Not as bad as Nine Lives. Mm-hmm. It's not as bad as No Man's Land. Um, it's not as bad as the 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 other one, the Dead. Oh, the the, the Death Curse. Death it's not Curse. as bad as Death Curse. So I think. If we if we take out Vengeance, we take out Never Hike Alone. This is probably the best fan film that you've that we've watched in this camping with Surge Thirty. I yeah, think yeah. the fan films of this quality that I thought were really really good. It's just this 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 is why I like movies so much because we all watch the same thing, but the the reaction is so, different. so different. Like yeah. the things that work for you, I I agree with. It just it didn't work enough for me to make it mm-hmm. a higher rating. And as fair. you know, it didn't offset the negatives that i found in the film like, and, I, like I was saying oh sorry go ahead jason <clears throat> and um yeah this i love this i love debating movies with people because <laughs> it's it's fascinating to me that so many yeah, people can go watch the exact same thing yeah. and right, have shut up. i won't talk about the movie so <laughs> i am talking about <laughs> but no, what i was gonna what i was gonna no, say you're talking about like, talking about the movie <laughs> with, with this with this movie with this movie again the jason character if this jason character was up to the standards of what I would like, this movie might have been a three or a four for me. But because for to me, not to anybody else, but to Sturdy, the Jason just w- didn't do anything for me. And again, at least give me that scary presence. It doesn't have to have a nostalgia. I did like how the mask looked. I like how they did their own twist of the mask. But 
I, I don't know, maybe using somebody a little bit taller, a bigger dude, I don't know. It just whatever it was, it just didn't work for me. And that's a again a huge important thing of Friday the thirteenth, again, when adult Jason or whatever you want to call it, the middle one, part two, teenage slash adult Jason, whatever you want to call that, and on when you have that character, you want him to have a certain presence, and he didn't have that presence for me for this film. I'm trying right. to figure out if I was like high or something because i was like this i literally said when he got on screen i was like god damn this jason seems kind of bulky and then it cut to this other angle of it i was like yo what the fuck like even though he kind of was a little bit thinner but he still had this width to him and the, the way he was i was like they might have lost fuck? their main guy the night of filming or something for that shot you never know you got i mean stuff like that changes all the time especially on sets like these at first, I thought he was a monster. I was like, oh, shit. See, or they might have just had a monster for that day. And just yeah. like, Let's make him look big. <laughs> and that, like, and he that, doesn't look that big to me in a few of these shots. Like He looks, well, I mean, I'm big, but, you know, like he look, he doesn't look that intimidating for, to me. The way he's kind of carrying himself. But I, So I kind of get that. But And, and that right there, again, and <clears throat> I mean, Friday the 13th, is, as you, most people know, is my favorite. Mm-hmm. Slasher franchise. You can you might as well just put up on my favorite. I don't really necessarily have favorite movies, but you might as well put them up there with that. Just even if you want to throw it the nostalgia factor, whatever it is. But with these fan films, again, I know they don't have to be the exact Jason. You don't want them to be the exact Jason for the movies. You want them to have their own thing, their own feel to it. But where you feel like that Jason is Jason in that film, and that's a very important. And again, I could overlook the bad acting, but if you have a really good Jason or good Jason at least. And to me, they didn't have that, plus the really bad acting. And I'm like, uh, I'm not even mad at the story. The story of how the guy, you know, his what was he family with the Christie? He bought, his family bought the camp from the Christies, right? Yep. And you know, him and his friend seeing Jason drown supposedly, which that part threw me off a little bit because it's like Jason drowned way before you were even born. So yeah, how the hell did like you the see 50s, it? Right? 60s. Yeah, and you're young as shit. <laughs> And your camp, does it say, like, established in, like, the 80s or something, if I'm not mistaken, on the yeah, shirt? Yeah, 1984, 1986, I think it's so. And I'm like, what the? So, okay, so you you changed that up. Okay, you made Jason die in the 80s instead of the 50s. Because you guys are only in, like, maybe your 30s at best. <laughs> but I, 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 I like that. Um, I like that they did that. I also, one of the things, I, there's a lot of good ideas in here. It's just, for me, the execution didn't work. I like the idea of um, the the guy that's running the camp now having been around when it all happened and knowing Pamela personally, you know, and thinking the family was really cool or whatever. I yeah, liked all that back. stuff. Again, I just, it wasn't, the way it was executed didn't work. Like if they sat down and maybe retweaked some things, I might like this a little bit more. Mm-hmm. I can agree with that, but again, the huge thing is a better Jason. <laughs> I'm going to keep saying that, too. A better Jason. So if you guys go out and make a fan Friday 13th fan film, even if I do some shit like that, <clears throat> criticize the Jason first, because that is very important, in my opinion. And then I would say if you were to do one about, say, Pamela or Elias, you really have to credit those are the characters, like those main ones, Jason. And if you do one about his parents or something, look at those characters specifically and just you want to get that feel that that's that, like that that's them. <clears throat> but the criticism of Jason, back, though. Just, Sorry, go ahead. Just to jump back on vengeance, that felt like Elias to me, in my opinion. What were you saying, Dad? Pool, go ahead. No, I was going to say, uh, if I mean, if we're going to criticize Jason and his look, we got to understand the story and where this Jason fits in, where this time, where the timeline of this <clears throat> Jason is supposed to be. Um, to no, me, I- it felt like it felt like a little bit between three and four, like this, this the setting of this movie. That's just my assumption based on. His look. And... I can see that. That's I'm pretty not, safe, I'd say. I'm not too, too mad at his look. It's just more of the person playing, like his body, everything about him, his body language. His look wasn't bad. I didn't care about that too, too much. But his so body you language. Like, you didn't like any of the kills then? Because obviously his body is his body is being accentuated and being focused on with those kills. The kills, were, the kills weren't bad, but still, the way he moved and just, it just didn't look good. It just didn't look good. The end result of the kill, of course, that's cool. But, I mean, <clears throat> I don't know. It just, it just, again, it just didn't feel like a Jason character to me. I feel like they should have used somebody bigger, somebody taller at the very least. 
Because it could have just been some dude just holding their arm. It felt like it was just a guy holding his arms out like this the whole time and then running like this and shit. That's how I got that's what I got from that. And I just didn't or running like this all weird and just it just didn't work. It took away. It took well, away. Was trying to portray a, a heavy lurch in his run, you know what I mean? It's like nah, it, Well, if we are sharing controversial opinions. Yes, please. Um, Hello. What's up, Desi? I don't think that what what's going on? Uh, I don't think that fan film oh. should be any longer than 15 minutes. And I don't think, I think they're useless if they're longer than 15 minutes. Personally. Mm. Mm. Interesting. I, I, as a, you know, from, from a filmmaking standpoint, I don't think fan, I think fan films are a waste of time personally, but if you're going to make them, they shouldn't be longer than 15 minutes. And that should just be your business card to try and get into becoming oh, a wow. filmmaker. Well, for, I agree. And I think the budget should be no more than three grand. No more than that. I mean, you can make the budget as much as you want. I don't care about that. That's your money. It's like if Millionaire wanted to make a 15 minute. But, like, if you want to be a filmmaker, make something original. That's what people want to see. But if you want, and I understand wanting to work with these characters. So make a short and say, I can do this with your character. Take it to, mm -hmm. so if you take, if you make Jason Voorhees or you make Superman or whatever, take it to those production companies and say, I can do this. I would love to give it a try with more money. I can make this. But that's the problem. Everybody's putting, they're raising these funds that take so long and there's so much that goes into it. And I've watched like with Never Hike Alone, Never Hike Alone 2, Never Hike Alone, which is, excuse my language, fucking ridiculous. You, you're making sequels to fan films. Make an original horror film. Get your name out there. You've made the first one. And then when you get your name out there, because clearly you've made a good film. Clearly, you have the chops. Make an original film, get your name out there, and then say, hey, guys, you know what I can do with Jason? I did this. People seem to really like it. You know, don't worry about making two, three, four. But that's, if people get lost in it, and they keep doing that. And I just, it's like, come on, man. It's, it's, it's pointless. If you want to be a filmmaker and you're making fan films, you're not going to get noticed. They want to know that you can create original stories with these characters or with new characters. They want to know that you can come in here and make it on your own if you don't get those characters. You need to be able to be flexible, you know? I agree. And and that's why I think, like, if you want to make a 15-minute short film that's a fan film that tells a story like this, fine. But when you make it, like, an hour and 10 minutes, it's too much. Like, mm -hmm. what's the point? You don't own the rights to the character. You make no money off of it. You can't do anything with it. And I'm telling you right now, no producers, I don't care how good it is, no producer in Hollywood that owns the rights to, or, you know, producer or executive producer or studio or whatever, they're not watching your film. Hmm. They're not watching your film. No I mean, agent watching your film. Maybe another filmmaker. I'm not saying other filmmakers won't watch it. Mm -hmm. I'm saying... No producers or anything like that saying, let's give this guy a job. Unless it's truly a wow, and the only time that's ever happened was not on fan films. That's only ever happened with original stuff. Mm. Like 405, which was a short film that Steven Spielberg saw. But the guys made a film where they landed a plane on the 405 freeway in California. Wow. Every, you know, so, like, it was all visual effects. So, like, it yeah. was... You know, like so, like that was gonna get noticed. Paranormal activity, you know, stuff like that, like little things like that. You're gonna go make original stuff. Mm -hmm. Go make that. It's okay if you want to make a fan film when you're, and it's okay. It's even better if you want to make a fan film to practice. I was gonna say as a practicing tool to yeah. develop your skills. But then don't raise all these funds. For, don't go. Mm -hmm. Don't use all your resources of crowdfunding. Like make an original film that's going to yep. get your name out there. Why would you? Why would I ask tons and tons of people money? Promise all these perks, put all this work in. That's a headache for something that may or may not make it, but <clears> it's <throat> most likely not going to make it if mm -hmm. I don't own any rights to it. I don't know. A lot of the people we've interviewed have done it mostly for the love of the franchise. I get that, but and that's fine if if it's, but that's a different story. Yeah. Now you're talking about some people who want to go out and for a hobby want to go filmmaking and they love these characters and they want to make movies. Go ahead, yeah, then make as much as you want. But, all, but see, but that, 
but that though, they're, yeah, they do that passion project, but then they're also doing like their own original films as well. They just wanted to do, they just love Friday the 13th, that they just wanted to do their own full length feature features, however many they've done. Which the and most he, I've seen is either one, one to two movies, I haven't seen any more than two. And even then, I would still wouldn't waste my time. It's still time, effort, money, crew you're putting together. You know, I would make a short film and then take that if you're a filmmaker. You know, because I'm guessing if they were on your show, they were in the industry. Yes. Correct? Correct. So, and Jason, am I am I right? Oh, I don't know. I, yeah, I think so. You were the one that said it, weren't you? <laughs> you were the one that said people have come on my show and they like No, me. I was on this show for the, the... Oh, on this show, on this show, yeah. yeah. The camera was first 30, yeah. Yeah, like, so, so like, like Cody, when he made Voorhees, he made an hour and a half, Jason, that I thought was good. I like it. Mm -hmm. I thought Voorhees was good. I had a good time with it. Same here. It, it didn't get him anywhere. That didn't propel him anywhere. His name didn't go anywhere with that. It didn't even show like, oh, he's a good filmmaker. You know, now, like so. So, what would you say is the reason that there's like no catalyst or no advent, no part of it is advantageous? Because is it because there's no marketing or you're not putting it in front of enough eyes or enough people? When you don't own the rights, you can't market it. That's true. When That's you don't true. own the rights, you can't sell it. So, you, so can't. you can't even take it to like a film festival or anything like that. No. Can you, can you play it at a goddamn drive-in or something? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know unless you're showing it for free. You can. Like, Cody took Voorhees and showed it at the Alamo. He rented nice. the theater. He had a big premiere for it. Everybody kind of came out. And it was a good time. And again, I really enjoyed the movie and had a fun time with it. Seeing everyone, it felt really good. But like, you know, to take in comparison, when we did that for Bloody Summer Camp and we all went out in the very same theater doing the very same thing, only I think it was like a couple of months later or something like that, that we did that. You see the difference of like, yeah, everybody came out and saw this fan film and then nobody was talking about it two mm. to three weeks later. But Dave is on his third film. Mm. And he gained the most amount of money in crowdfunding for his third film. You know, he's still, I think he's up to like 65,000. That's amazing. Just in crowdfunding, and he's still going, and he's filming it. And the stars are getting bigger. In I was going to say, are we are we you talking know? about now this is an original IP type deal? Yes, sir. He, did? But yeah. he, did. he writes his stuff. Yep, he sets true. it all up. Um, Deadpool knows, because he's seen Dave on the show, right? Uh, Dave actually, Kerr and... Uh, I know Buddy exactly Kerr. what you're talking about, too. Yeah. I actually reached out to him about... When we do review Bloody Summer Camp, having them on for interview slash review type of deal. And then oh, also, let me know. I'll, I'll, get, I'll set that up. Also, which we'll make it on a Thursday because I'd love to have you on here too. And also have, having him discuss his new project that is, you know, the Indiegogo going for that and all that good stuff. Yeah, Dave's, Dave's great. great. But he's a nice guy. I had him on a long time. I actually think I had him on when they were promoting uh, Bloody Summer Camp. I had him and um, Mike on. Yeah, it, it, it's... I, I, I'm a big follower of like the, the Sam Raimi, Bruce Campbell uh, school of thought, Rob mm -hmm. Tapper school of thought. When they wanted to shop their movie around for uh, Evil Dead, they made a 15 minute short film of Evil Dead, where it was just Bruce Campbell in a gory setting at a cabin fighting a demon. And they took that 15 minute film and they brought it all around to investors. So but if you if that's a say he did so, uh, they okay. made a fan film of halloween and showed it to investors do you think they would have gotten the money no because they want to see teller right. yeah so like that's my and again i'm not saying you can't make fan films there's I, definitely i get, I get what you're saying though yeah. like he's not saying you can't but he's he, i guess basically what he's saying is like look you guys want to make a fan film to get some eyes on you 15 minutes yeah, better, better, or do a 15 minute short of your own original content. That would be even better. But if I you mean, want to do it, Jason, but I do understand like wanting to do that passion project, especially if you grew up, you know, you little kid. Oh, I want to be in this movie. I want to be in this movie. And that's like, you know yep. what? Let me just make my own version of it. I do get that part of it, but I also get what you're talking about. Like, if you really want to make it big in this, you may have, to, I mean, not you may have to it's like just make your own original stuff. Just you gotta start yep. with that work on your craft that way you'll have you'll get better and better at creating a fresh story each time you make a new story yeah. fan films should be for young filmmakers it should be for young filmmakers and i'm talking teenagers up into their 20s learning just and it's like it, that's almost like your garage band days mm -hmm. what about okay i have a question just just speaking on the because you're just saying basically when you're learning now what about if somebody's starting later on in life 
do you still think they should try to Fine, but make them but again like 15 minutes use okay. that as your way gotcha. of learning you know because yeah. you're again you're not making any money off of it and like true i guarantee true. you if if somebody is really truly like dedicated to the craft to want to keep going and become a filmmaker and they keep making fan films they will eventually get bored and want to make something original yeah i could see that could or see team that. up with someone like maybe they're not a writer and that's fine you know yeah. you don't have to be make some make the original uh piece yourself you could but be you're going to want to team up with somebody who, who does yeah. but if you're just making fan films you're also limiting yourself to a certain number of people yeah. who that's are true. like yeah i want to work with you on this you know because a lot of other low budget filmmaking crew members like makeup artists things like that who go job to job and you know it can be a very cool play, way to live um you know especially in like your 20s and 30s you're doing this and you see fan film and you're like all right well i mean if it pays it pays then you go do it but nine times out of ten it's deferred right you're not, and if it's deferred what how are you ever going to get your money back on a fan film mm. You know, and, and now, uh, Dadpool, I know a friend of yours, Chris, mm -hmm. who makes very good films. They look good. They're well written. You know, he does a good job with them. I put nothing past him. Now, I haven't seen anything original of his, so I can't put him, lump him into this or anything like that. Oh, he's but, got a lot of original content. You just got to look on his channel. Well, fair, and, but again, I'm not lumping him into yeah, that. I'm saying, right, 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 I, no, right. I'm just saying, like, I know you know a guy who does make fan films, yeah. but if he's making his original content as well, and that's what he focuses on for, you know, like making the money and stuff like that, then when you're doing it, you can make all the fan films you want. Who gives a shit? You know, <laughs> like at that point, who cares? Yeah. But if you're starting out, and but also, if I remember correctly, Chris's is mostly short films, aren't they? Yeah, there's there there are no more than ten minutes, which is the perfect. perfect I think, and that's perfect film. practice, and that's something. That's another thing too. Like I, per, again, I'm I'm more for the original. I think you mm -hmm. should do original pieces because you never know who you can sell to or or what festivals you can put in. But if you're like in between jobs, you got six months off, and you're like getting the bug, you want to film something. Fine, fan film, real quick, boom. I okay. get that, but that's you're still doing the job. You're you're in there. But if you're starting out, cut out the fan films. Stop making two-hour fan films, hour and a half fan films. Make a 15-minute fan film. Say, hey, I can do this with your IP. I can do this with an, a character that exists. This is an idea I had. And I, what I would do is I would never make a 15-minute fan film without having a feature script written that works within that world, mm. whether it be a reboot or, or some kind of you know requel or whatever it is. And then again, shop it to whoever owns the rights and say, I've made this fan film. Mm -hmm. You know, it's getting a lot of heat on YouTube. It's doing really well. But I also wrote this feature script. And if you would think about it, I would love for you to check it out. Because now look at it too, uh, to point out again to your friend Chris Deadpool. And I don't mean to keep putting him on the thing. Look at what happened to him. He made a fan film, a predator based fan film. And somebody else is making money off of it. Yep. So stop wasting your time on fan films. Make original stuff. And if you want to, if you want to do Predator, start making original stuff that's kind of in the vein of Predator. James Cameron loved being in, wanted to do sci-fi stuff in early on. Mm. So he filmed sci-fi stuff. Mm -hmm. He worked in the sci-fi world. You know, he he Makes did. He, you know, he worked his way into that. You know, stop doing the fan films, you know, because then somebody else is going to make money off of it. It's crazy. It's it, <laughs> you make so many great points, but I, I, I love watching those fame films that you're talking about at the same time. But don't get me wrong. I do want to see original indie films. Do not get me wrong. on that. I love seeing original content. I love seeing that. Cause it, it, show, it shows us more as fans and podcasters, because we're all podcasters slash content creators on here, but it shows us like a different a different view, like a different version of you, like another side of your mind or whatever. We get to see deeper okay. in your mind because it's like, okay, I'm creating this story or me and my team are creating this story, even if you pulled it from some realism or whatever, but you're creating this this story instead of 
you have like you have the safety, and I'm no disrespect, no disrespect when I say this because I can't do it, but you have the safety of the character of Jason or Fred. Even if you don't follow the whole story of it, you have the safety of that character. You have the safety of some sort of camp with Jason. You have the safety of Nightmare on Elm Street with Freddy and Freddy, and so on and so forth with the rest of them. Haddonfield for Halloween and all that. So you have that. You have that safety net where it's like, okay, if I can't, I want to do a Jason story. I want people to like it. Um, I kind of want to get away from Camp Crystal Lake, but you know what? Let me let me kind of jot this down real quick. You know what? Let me keep Crystal Lake, Camp Crystal Lake in there too. And then let's, you know what I mean? It's just like you have you still have that kind of thing right there. So it's like, I do want to see original content. I love original content. So yeah, yeah you and I come from a we come from a, a I don't want to say I guess a selfish fan point of view, Sturdy, where we yes, give us more everything. Friday the Thirteenth, and then Mick. Mick comes from, you know, the world. He understands, you know, how the business works. And it's always fascinating to hear that alternate take because I I, like I don't think about the filmmakers. Like, I just think that I have a Friday 13th movie on TV that I get to watch, you know? Uh, I don't, I don't see You that. have, like, 12 of them, though. Yeah. Like, like there are, there's 12 of the movies there. And, the, and I know that's not real with every movie. And, and I'm not putting you down. I get it. And the fan films do help. I'm not saying I don't watch them. I'm not saying I don't think they're cool. There are some very cool fan films. And yes. again, I you know, and I, I, hate, I hate pointing uh, out that pool so much, but you know, I love the guy, so I'm going to keep doing it. Chris <laughs> Notarelli, uh, his friend, makes really good fan films. Yep. I've watched them; they're very good, and he does all different types. So, you know, I'm not saying there isn't a merit to making them, and it isn't cool to see them, and especially like you said, if it's hobby or something like that. Cool. I mean, I've seen some Star Wars fan films. That blew me out of the water, and I thought they did it better than the actual IPs in Star Wars were being done. You know, so you know when you go on and you're and you with all of this, like I agree with you. Like I do like watching them, but I'm and yeah, it may be sound from a business standpoint. I'm saying it from a you want to be a filmmaker. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And you're raising mm-hmm. all of this money for a fan film. It's it's a waste. It really is. Like, I, and it's so sad, and you see how it becomes a waste because I see so many people raising money for fan films, or doing it, or putting their own money in most times, and that's that just never works because you always just become broke, and then you're you have nothing really to show for it. You can't go anywhere with it, mm. you know, and and. Then I watch other people who are like, well, fine, I'm going to make something. And the first thing they make sucks and it's terrible and it, it, it's horribly done. But then they got a chance to make another thing and then another thing. And it got better and better each time. And you're going to get better. You can shoot 100 fan films. You're going to get yep. better as you go. But it's not a business. You're not going to make anything off of it. You're not going to do anything with it. And you're, they're not going to magically hire you because, again, you guys all just argued over how many Jason fan films and which one was better. So tell me, which one, which director of those movies should be directing the next Friday the 13th? Hmm. I like that. I'll tell you what. I'll take Jason Brooks yeah. working with this dude who did the cinematography on this one. Shit. I'll say I'd want Never Hike Alone, alone yeah, and Vengeance. Put team. those ones together. Put those teams together. I don't want Never Hike the Lone's mm-hmm. team to do it. But at the same time, I all these fan films that we did watch, I would love to see what they could do with original content, with original films. I know a couple of them are doing original their own original films. They're working on that. <clears throat> um, but I'd love to see them all do their own original thing, even if it's original shorts, 15 minutes, half hour, whatever. I don't care. I would love to see it. I'd love to see it. Just to see at the very Jason least, did. I'd like to see Jason Burks play Jason on a big screen like adaptation. Well, well, real quick, because this is the last episode of the Friday mm-hmm. 13th, and I asked this again um, with this like kind of experiment you've been doing, Sturdy, uh, and all of you. I, you know, so I asked you, who would you like to direct it? Now, you all have in your head who, who out of all of these fan films, who the director, you'd like to see directed. Now, take the actual Friday the 13th vision and and put it on the big screen and now this is the big budget movies and take that director and what they made even though you liked their vision for what it was because you got something extra out of jason Voorhees, 
does that fit the vision for all? Little choppy, Mick. Ah, come on. Ah, can you hear me? Are you still, yeah, yeah. We, we just lost you when you said, does it fit the vision? Does it fit the vision? I meant, does it fit the vision of like the franchise of like building and will all the fans love that vision? And now I'm not saying it can't, it can't. Yeah. But like, are That's you just choosing them because out of all of these, they were the best one? Definitely out of all you of know, these, they were the best ones. Plenty of hard directors out there that are probably better. Yeah, I see Sorry. what you're saying. I see what you're saying. You know, who directed original stuff? Now, don't get me wrong. I can go on a whole rant about re so, reboots, too. <laughs> so, a quick question for you, though. Okay, because what maybe I don't understand for sure the difference, but what makes somebody directing something on a small scale versus a large scale any different than when you got to start out somewhere anyway? As long as the writing is good and you have the vision in place and you can actually have that be translated through the lens, I feel like that that's what it is. It's not about just who you are as a director, who the director is doing it. I think it's about the person who's able to take the vision and create it on screen. You know what I mean? And who's to say that the person who's doing it mm. on the small scale can't just do it on the big scale. You know what I mean? If even, even if, yo, this is going to be their first time on a big scale doing it with, let's say a, a $50 million budget and they're only used to, you know, 50 grand. Mm -hmm. Who's to say that that person that's only used to the fifty grand isn't going to kill it with a fifty million dollar budget? Because I can tell you for all assurity. Now, listen. Are there any exceptions to the rule? And Orson Welles, of course. Uh, <laughs> you know, because he's Orson Welles. Um, but now let's 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 equate it to like gaming. And now this is this is a dumbed down version, like allegory. Uh, oh, so now allegory, he's coming um, from um, my um, mental. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. But like, just because you are the worst damn gamer. So like, let's, let's like put it to, to, to gaming. So let's re rewind to 1988 mm -hmm. and you got the NES, right? And young man, young Chris is playing the NES. He's, he's getting better and better. He's doing a good job. He beats, you know, whatever the hardest game is at the time. And now Chris, you're playing PS5. You're killing it. You're doing really good. Right, I like where you're going. I'm I have, I, I'm manifesting. Could, could Chris on NES do the same with the PS5 that you could? No, because Chris on NES better. has equipment that isn't the same. He doesn't have the same experiences going through the motions of the years true. of gaming. It's true. Chris uh, on the NES doesn't uh, have just that whole you know, like that maturity of stepping onto. A fifty million dollar, which in today's world is still like low budget. It's it's insane, yeah. <laughs> but a fifty million dollar shoot, you know, like from fifty thousand to fifty million. It's I will tell you from personal experience, <clears throat> stepping onto any type of shoot that is millions and millions and millions of dollars will make you shit a brick uh, when you're used to all the low budget because you don't have the experience. You'll ain't you'll gain it. But you're not going to gain it going from director of low budget to director of okay. of the high budget. You're going to get it from going from director of low budget to following the chain up. Now, again, you can do it. Paranormal activity. <laughs> yeah. You know, stuff like that. It happens. But you got to do something original that wows everybody. Oh, I'm not. And I'm not disputing just the original thing. I was just saying that. Hey, you know what? Like you said, the whole difference between. Yeah. Okay, so why can't even, why can't the dude who's used to fifty k just step on like a boss and be like, you know what? I'm taking the reins on this. This is my dream. This is my shit, and make it happen. That's to me one hundred percent doable. Yeah. And 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 think about think about it from that. And I'm sorry, I'm like kind no, of taking good, over and good. talking, good. but uh. Let's take paranormal activity, right? Mm -hmm. So paranormal activity, uh, and, and I'm, I'm using that as the example of like the guy who made it, you know, from that low budget. That's uh, Oren something, Oren Pell or whatever, whatever his name is. Um, he only directed three or four of the paranormal activity movies. Okay. He's produced a ton of stuff. Uh -huh. 
but he directed one movie, became huge, and only directed three of its sequel. So he's not a director. He has no experience to do it. They know they can't hire him to direct another $50 million, something like that. But becoming a producer, being hands-on with it, that's that's a skill thing. You can learn that. Okay. You know, that talent-wise of having the eye, the creativity, and things like that in those different areas, he didn't have it. I can tell you right now, if he's not moving on to more and more directing jobs. I mean, But producing-wise, sure. So then, and that's what I mean. Like, you can't just step in. Like, you can get lucky, but you're probably. I was not like, what do you say to like Jordan Peele? Director. You know what I mean? I'm like, he just came out of he's nowhere. Not lucky. He's been doing, he was it for doing years. comedy and shit like that. Not really all of this other filmmaking type shit. I mean, they did a skit show. I don't get me wrong. You. But I beg you yeah. to go back and rewatch Key and Peele and tell me in almost every sketch that that that, that dude is not a horror director through and through. I'm not saying that he's he, not. I'm just saying that he just came in and was like, yo, I've no, arrived at I'm this. I'm doing that. That's, no, but that's six years of experience. And doing another of directing, type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of writing, okay. of, of, of cinematography, yeah. of getting the look, the feel, the vibe down. Yeah. Because it's your show and you can control yeah. that. Hey. So he gained all that experience and then wrote a script and had a chance to direct it. And they didn't give him any money for yeah. it. They gave him very little amount of money to do it because Keanu did well. Oh, that was hilarious. So, like, he stepped in. He was like, "I want to do this." Yep. They gave him a little money, and it just Absolutely. again, that's that was his blow yep. up. But that was one where that's a guy who didn't get lucky and blew up at a film festival. That's a guy who's been busting his ass. That's true. Uh, and that's came true. up in the comedy circuit and all that stuff for twenty years. Yeah. Like, you know, he and Jason Sudeikis were in a comedy group in like two thousand. Yeah. Together. Yeah. So, like, they've been doing this for years, years. Yep, yep. and comedy mm -hmm. skills can translate into horror it's all about timing timing yeah have comedy timing you mm -hmm. can do some horror timing as well so yeah no that's true no i, I hear you I, hear it. I just had to keep the conversation going and keep no, I, I, I really enjoyed this and mick on if honestly man if you're on if you're free on thursdays i know that some some are going to be like horror review slash interviews but i'd really like you on for this because you're an independent creator and you used to do film and all that stuff and I, I really, I'm really trying to have a lot of indie horror. So, please, guys, if you know anybody, let them know I'm doing this. If every Tuesday and Thursday, if I can do it, I, again, I'm gonna keep doing my content, guys. Forgive me, but if I can stick with the indie stuff, I will. But I'm dead serious. Hit me up, and I'll say fuck the regular movies, even the ones I have on the wheel for now. They'll be on standby until the strike is over. But you gotta help a brother out. You have to help a brother out. Popcorn and pints is a whole another. That's a whole another thing. There's too many heads over there. But right here in Horror Research 30. <laughs> And I know there's a lot of indie horror that's coming out. If you guys want to come in here for an interview with us, and we'll talk about what got you into that kind of stuff. Whatever the case may be, just come on. Come on. Let's go. I got some. I got a few lined up. Awesome. Um, yeah, I, I will say, uh, I, I, you know, yeah, and we'll talk about it because, you know, we'll talk about coming on and, and, and whatever. And I'm always happy to help you out and mm -hmm. be there for you. Third. Um, but when it comes to uh, Dave Kerr, I just wanted to say, like, I know he's filming right now. So, like, he's filming through August. Okay. Uh, so Return of Slasher Nurse. So, like, he is, you know, I talk to him, like, a lot. So, like, I know he's, like, super stressed. Yeah. And I'm not even talking to him. Like, I'm not even the guy who talks to him, like, a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, <laughs> so, like, I will put in a good word for you. Let's get to, like, September, October when he's, like... <laughs> All right, filming because like it's high, it's at high tension, you know. Oh, I get it, man. I get it. That's that's absolutely fine. I greatly appreciate that. I, that's absolutely mm -hmm. fine. If shit, that that'll work. No, you guys are going. That'll on. work. That'll work. I've had him on before a few months ago, or no, a few months ago for uh, bloody summer. When bloody summer camp was going on. The go, go away is coming out soon too, so you could probably have him on for that. Perfect. Well, he can come on. He can come on for Go Away. He can come on to promote his movie. He can come on for Bloody Summer Camp. That's three times right there. So, guys, if you have multiple movies, I don't it, fan films. I'll accept them too. I don't know if Mick will, but I stir he will. <laughs> but I, I had to. I had to. But no, seriously though, independent creators, horror creators, let's let's work. Seriously, let's work. And uh, Hollywood, fuck you. Start paying people what they deserve. Start giving these people what they deserve. And until then, fuck you. They're coming for you, you now. You, you talented uh, billionaires. Are yeah. you talentless billionaires? Pay the talent, because without the talent, you guys ain't shit. <laughs> and don't call your streaming services. I want to say thank you. 
well, sturdy for sorry. having me on. I want to say I want to say I'm sorry to Jason and Dadpool for messing with you guys, but I do love you. <laughs> I was more I was more like push pointing that at you, Deadpool, but like talking about Chris, but like I was messing oh. with you, Jason, because I love you. I love no, you. Guys, you can check uh, it out Chris? because he'll be he'll be coming on to uh to maybe defend some of your statements very soon. Mm-hmm. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oh really? <laughs> well, yeah, look, dude. I mean, listen. Uh, no, he re- he really is coming out in a couple of weeks, though. He really is good. He should, man. He's down the guy. Um, but I oh, do yeah, want to oh, say, yeah. he should make a uh, fan film of Weed Wolf, and you guys should show it on the show. And Chris should play Weed Wolf, <laughs> <laughs> and we can do a we can do a Blood Blood Lake fan film. I mean. <laughs> I already told you. I already have the Firebird. I'm just going to be driving to the track, and that's my only part in the movie. Whatever you guys do after that, I don't care. <laughs> you are putting on a mullet, and you're hanging out the whole time on that couch, dude. Ugh, I can't do that. Jason doesn't know what I'm talking about because he watched 15 minutes in the movie. A black dude and a mullet? Is that a thing? I might watch Blood Lake if that's a thing. I don't watch Blood Lake. <laughs> I'm going to have to watch it now. I've never seen a black guy with a mullet before. <laughs> No, not a black guy with a mullet. Just a mullet. <laughs> I've seen a mullet. They're coming back, which they shouldn't be. But that's another. He's jealous because he doesn't have a mullet. That's why you're saying they shouldn't be. Coming back. <laughs> I could grow a mullet if I wanted to. My back hair grows just what fine. The... So it's the top. So grow one. Grow it out, Jason. Grow it out till October. <laughs> Come on, man. Join the crew. No. Yeah, look at him. They just go mine out. Too. Let's go long. scrub some floors together. Yeah, but you guys, you guys have hair up top. I'm not growing a bold mullet. You should do it, dude. You should. Oh my god, you should do it. Now. Oh, you should grow a ponytail. Like, there you go. Mine? If um, I was still single, maybe, but not. No. Jay, uh, you I'm telling you, you, keep the. You grow like the long horseshoe into a ponytail. Keep the beard. <laughs> oh, I call it the island stick. You got a new persona, dude. Bro. Yep. You're like the old hippie in Oregon who just like. Sells the weed and lives in the trailer out in like his like land. It's oh, dude, you could do it. Can, can, can we get your hair implants? I just I just want to get your hair implants just to mohawk you up. No. They right. Thursday punk. He is <laughs> okay, okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. And this 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 goes. What about some Beijing? I know black guys do. I don't know if white dudes do Beijing or not. What the fuck what, is that? What is Beijing? Isn't that a place? <laughs> no, no, that is a place. But no, there's like some. You have to Google it. Beijing. It's like some shit. If I Google it, I'm getting the place. That's number right. one. That's I'm number one. I'm gonna find it. What is Beijing? Or, what or is Beijing? And, oh, Google says it's a fucking place, dummy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably spelling it wrong. No, it's right here, Beijing. Hair color and perm. <laughs> All this, this is a black thing. That's why you guys don't know about it, dude. Next time I'm on a show with you, AJ, you gotta you gotta have a different color light because I'm looking <laughs> at you, man, and it just like everything. You look angry. <laughs> oh my god! Can you just do freeze puns? Put on the blue and do freeze puns. See, look at Beijing. Beijing. That's big in. There know. you go. Say, there you go. Beijing is a completely different thing. <laughs> no, no, this, this is the hair stuff I was telling you about. Jason, just get some. You know, you listen to a lot of hip hop. You look at the black hair too. And get, AJ, you look get like you're a dude rag. We'll get you some waves. Yeah, you're just not doing black face. You're doing everything else black. Black. Could you imagine black. him with the low brush cut, looking like fucking Amari Hardway. Oh my god! If by next year you are, uh, you're like Eric LaSalle from uh, Coming to America, and you're like, buy some so soul glow. Good. <laughs> so so good. Good. Oh, Jason hanging out with me and Chris for one week goes home with some coral rolls and a do rag. Look at the. Fuck? What happened? Dude, everyone well, who knows Jason would be like he, that fits him more than like anything else. It it, it does. He comes on the podcast. Like yo, listen, every time me and him are doing the scary snaps together pre-show, he's listening to hip hop. I'm listening to whatever, whatever. I just hit play, and he's nice always girl, listening to hip hop. Always, dude. I'm going to uh, Detroit. Barbie girl, to see Spice Girls. Nice, nice. Yeah, he's coming. No with way. He's left in the roots. There I will. Know. I'll listen to some Spice Girls. I'll tell you what I want, whatever. <laughs> I want. Don't a tell me what you want. What you really, really want? <laughs> I don't wanna. I don't wanna. I don't wanna really, really know. Really, really know. Oh, <laughs> I, I want to be, be my lover. I want, I want some weed. Let me make this Whoa. as clear to you as I can. <laughs> 
<laughs> bro, it's like the fucking Can commands we do the for Pee-wee the fucking Herman Winter thing? Soldier, bro. It makes me fucking my programming come out. Look, the muscles are bulging. <laughs> ah! Dirty on this show. Can you start doing the uh, the the um the like the Pee Wee Herman word of the day? But it's always Weed Wolf. And every time someone says it, like a siren goes off and it like starts showing up on the screen. On face. Not a siren, but Pee Wee's laugh would be a Dude, good Dude, AJ siren, quit on but... us. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was going to be Carl. See, we can, you know what? Can, AJ quit on us. I got the, he ha- I got look, the mask. I got he the, wolf, the mask. wolf mask. I got the, the wolf, wolf mask. mask. You're the new Weed Wolf. We have it. Look at this. Dude, you got to wear that t shirt too and that chain. Yes, I love it. All right, Deadpool. I have a special request for. <laughs> I, 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 I know, I know you and, and Xander are going to. The- <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! It's funnier and better than the movie was. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Deadpool. I have a request. Now you can hear me. What's up? I know that you and um, Xander are going to be the kind that we're going to um, later on this month. What's it yep. called again? Sci-Fi Where? Horror Fest. Sci-Fi Horror Fest. Up Where? in Ver- it's up in Ver- Verona, New York. Oh right? Or is it in Rome? Vernon, Vernon, New York. It's in Vernon, New York. Vernon, New York. Of course. It's going to be a, Where are you? Uh, PA or CT? New York. I'm or, Jersey, I'm Jersey. Jersey. Never mind. Jersey. Right I forget. Now. Jersey. <laughs> Who, Mick? Yeah, I'm looking at it. I'm like, yeah. how far? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking yeah, it up um, too. I'm like, how far is Vernon, New York? My request <laughs> is, I, like I said, I know you guys are you guys are cosplaying both days. I'm only gonna be there that Saturday next year, both <laughs> days hopefully. But um, can you bring that wolf mask, please? Absolutely. Wait, Thank wait, wait. When is this shit? Oh, uh, uh, couple twenty fifth, twenty twenty fifth and twenty sixth, the last Friday and Saturday of this month. We said it was what two hours away for us. Something like that. It's not two hours. hours. It's like an hour, hour and twenty. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hour and a half. Did that drive today? Twice. Because you're a good guy. Damn it. No, I'm just I'm warped by my brother. I'm so scared. You're his favorite sibling. Blink twice if you need help. <laughs> oh shit! That was more than twice. I don't know what to do. I don't Everybody. either. <laughs> I can't count when I'm seizure. blinking. <laughs> I don't know how to use my fingers when I'm blinking. Is this twice? <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, uh, weed wolf is a hell of a drug. Hey, uh, I think you got some flies around your eyes. You're trying to catch them or something. Man. <laughs> Jason, I feel bad. Dude, you need to watch Blood Lake and Weed Wolf back to back. So next time you're on the show, we're all together. You're in on it, dude. Yeah, I'm he's right. It he's, can't be worse than what I watched today. <laughs> okay. Dude, dude <laughs> yeah, but, you don't understand but, but, how angry. Go back and rewatch the episode of Weed Wolf and just see how angry Chris was. It was hilarious. That's a good picture. You should say it. It is that. a good picture. Yeah. It's a hilarious. You should also watch the full full movie of Weed Wolf and the full movie of Blood League. I just want to say that Dadpool is going down because uh, him and I have a match on uh, Real Combat that Mick needs to make happen. Because I remember we challenged each other, but then something happened that we couldn't do it. And um, I'm ready to take him on. Real Combat comes back in September, so if you guys want to be the first episode. Uh, You better start working out because you can't handle it. (sighs) Oh, shit. You say you don't want the smoke, bro. My my baldy's a lot better. Ooh. And my, and my all right, all right. You know what? You know what? Yo, he got, he got that subscription. He gets that shit in the mail. Jason, Jason, hear hear me out on this one. All right, Jason and Dadpool are supposed to go up against each other. Mick, hear me out if you're okay with this. Me and Jason are supposed to go against each other, but instead of doing that, how about me and Chris go against each other? The two winners will go against each other. Two losers will go against each other at a later date. Tournaments, cool bitches. Okay. Huh? Movie fucking tournaments, baby. So basically, we go. And for those of you who haven't been on the show, we go on the show. We each pick a <laughs> random movie, and we have to convince Mick to watch it. Whatever one he picks, that's the winner of the show, and that'll determine the winner of the episode, of course. And then go on from that, which will be on the. So pick fan right. films. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Do not pick a fan film. I will. You both lose. Oh <laughs> shit! Are independent films allowed? We have to find the best. Um, or do you I want? Mean, you guys, you can pick whatever, but remember, so like. You got it. It's it really comes down to the best argument. So, like, say you know, 
you pick a you pick like something that nobody's ever heard of as an independent film and jason like or you know whoever picks like superman 2 mm-hmm. and he's like all right let's go superman 2 probably gonna win because it's like oh yeah i know that's good yeah <laughs> i know i yeah. want to watch that tonight yeah. Gotcha, <laughs> but gotcha. but there have been some that I've never seen before that came out of nowhere and just won. So I was a winner in one episode, guys. Believe it or not. What Blood Lake won? Because I'd weird. never seen it or heard it. <laughs> yep. And he sold me on it. He sold me on it. It's a great episode. People should go back and watch it. You should. Um, he sold me on it by saying, telling me how terrible it was. Mm. I was and like, I gotta see it. What What made me laugh about that, and even looking back, and I've had this discussion actually recently, is you were like, you're the first person that came on here with a movie that you can't stand at all that you actually hate. Like, I don't know how the hell you convinced me to watch this. It's like, look, I just, I just honestly, when I did that, one, I'm going to be honest with you, Mick, it was, it was, I was like, all right, you know what? I got to do something a little different than everybody else. Everybody's going to go out there with a movie they love. I can't do that. That's, I got to do, I'm sturdy. I got to do something different. So I did that. And then two, I was like, if this wins, Mick has to watch this bullshit too. <laughs> You did. That, and it was that may have been my one. If Mick hasn't watched his bullshit too, and then nobody else has ever done this, so if it wins, cool. I think you the know. guy you were up against for that one did Phantasm. Um, yeah, it was uh, no, it was the guy who was my co-host, Chris Writings. Um, mm-hmm. This 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 past episode, he's never won. He's never he's been on a few times, and he said it on he said it on the podcast this this week. He goes, you know, I've been on a few times, and I've never won. I was My like, question was he on against Blood me Lake first? Beat Phantasm? Huh? Yeah. Was he Blood Lake beat Phantasm? I beat wow. Blood Lake beat Phantasm yeah. because I've seen Phantasm so, so much and I do love the movie. But I've but, never heard of Blood Lake, and here comes this guy telling me how it's the worst movie of all time. And as he's explaining it to me, I'm like, this seems like the best movie of all time. It's so intriguing. I need to watch it. And that's what won it. Yep. Sturdy tricked me. Is See, I'm over here, pretty. If I'm you over here thinking my gears are turning, I'm not liking it. An evil genius. I'm an evil genius. I'm, I'm like, what? What angle do I take? Do I try to stump the movie man? Do I give him something that I know I can be convincing about just to win? Oh, what this do, just what in. Do uh, I take here? Nicholas Cage bought the rights to Blood Lake. Oh shit! Get the fuck out! Really? We're gonna have oh, to partner shit. with Nick Cage, bro. Dude, I, dude, dude, I was so excited for a second. I got so excited. I was so happy. <laughs> You know what? All I wanted to do that? is write Nicolas Cage fuck and be it. like, "I will, I want, I want to do anything to work Nicolas on a Cage remake of a Blood Lake, Lake <laughs> fan film." I will make a Blood Lake fan film for you, Nicolas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> That's dedication right there. That's, That's awesome. I'm retired. I can do fan films now. <laughs> now it's hobby. He's done. He's done. <laughs> 15 my my how the tables have turned so quickly technically this is a fan film oh We're shit all on film boom that's it you hear that people so. we did it this is our movie <laughs> read it x <laughs> <laughs> i don't know why that really <laughs> wow Wow, wow. So that, basically, man. just so you guys know, will be what Mick at night is. <laughs> I, what, when is okay? So, when, when is that if and when I eventually no, stay no, up late enough? No, 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 do it. This, this needs to happen. This really needs to happen. I feel like Mick at night needs to be a Patreon show, Mick at night, whatever night you want it to be, where we can whoever you want to show up. But I want to be on at least one of the episodes. That ain't going to be a Patreon show, that's going to be a YouTube show, man, because that's just going to be chaos. That's just going to be fucking chaos. it's going to be, it's probably <laughs> going to be. The people here, except Jason, because I don't know. He goes to bed pretty early, and that's not a dig. That's not a dig. You're a hardworking man. All right, can I cuss? I went to bed at six thirty the other day. It was a great. Oh, I'm in. I'm in. I don't blame you, Jason. That is not a dig. I'm not upset at you. Oh no, I. I, I'm in. I'm with you. (laughs) I'm just saying, if I'm up late enough, which I'm not. It's probably these three that are going to be on there because they're always up late. Yeah, I'll, I'll watch it at five a.m. when I wake up. <laughs> so we still know, got we still got an appointment, open sir. Invitation. Oh, that's and, right. And everybody who's watching, open we, invitation. We still have an appointment, board. good sir. If I make a at night, right? If I'm like, okay, I'm going to do an episode. I'm going to go live at Saturday night at fucking twelve a.m. or whatever, you know. 
I'm going to send the link to all four of you. Every single time I do a show, I don't have to join, I feel no obligation. But I'm just going to send it because most likely you guys will be up. <laughs> yeah. So I'll tell you what. If, if it's Saturday, if you make it 11, I'll be there. 12 is a maybe because I'm going to the track a lot on Sundays now. So I'm trying oh, to. Oh, no. I don't know if I'm going to do. But no, Saturday. I want this to happen. I don't know what it is. Okay. I want this I'm to just, happen because this sounds like something fun, yeah. funny, right up all of our alleys. And just it's, it's, it's one of those shows where we don't have to prepare for it at all. Just like, yo, we're going on. What the fuck mm-hmm. are we talking about? I don't know. <laughs> I told you that's what I was going to do. Jason, Jason, Jason remembers pod chatters. Mm-hmm. That failed experiment. <laughs> that was fun. Hey, <laughs> gotta have fun. Gotta have fun. You know, get some creators together, have some fun, have some laughs. That's what we're all here for, people. But right, seriously, guys. send me your indie films and all that stuff because I want to connect with you guys and give you guys the light that you deserve. And now is the time because, I mean, when this strike's going on, you would think that a lot of independent creators would be, hey, let's link, let's work together, let's try to get some shit out. You know, let's go to these other, let's go to these independent podcasters that are going to actually listen to us and let's, you know, do some work with them. Let's get, let's get some interviews, let's do all that good shit. But yes. let's work, people, let's work. Yeah. And I've got some great news. The scary snobs are back next week. Oh, that is yes. right. Yes. Doing a live know. show that Sturdy has not agreed to yet, but we will be there doing a live show. It's going to be. <laughs> oh, I great. will be there for that one. Talking. Two weeks I could be there. If it's two weeks, I can be there. Wait, Wait two weeks doing a live there? show next Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> every other because every other Friday I have to be up at four forty-five in the morning. So. So let's do do next the live Friday show. Like seven, can you do the live show at seven p.m. instead of? 9 p.m. Like before this? Yeah. Lead that's, into it. That's possible. That I'm shaking possible. my head yes. Like, I'm his manager. Like, yeah. That is possible. Well, if you do a live show, I can't be your guest on the 17th. That's my kid's birthday. When is and the 17th? That's a Thursday. Next Thursday? Next Thursday? No, I don't think so. I think it's a weekend. Week, week after. after. Yeah. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Don't worry, yeah, guys. We're going to make it happen, guys. Sure. We're back. <laughs> We'll figure it out. That's going to happen, though, guys. That's going to happen. So make sure you check out the scary styles. Might as well point that out. Make sure you check out the scene styles, including the Patreon, including Mick at night when that comes up. we got to put pressure on him. So whatever night he's up late, bored, and we're all up late, bored, he just drops the link in the group chat. We just all go, if we all join the show, if, if at least two of us join, I'm assuming the show goes on. If it doesn't, if it's just one of us, you know what, just go scary to bed. Scary Snob's drinking game. Every time he so mentions Blood Lake or Cocaine Bear, do a shot. Yeah, you guys. I don't drink anymore. I'll do a shot of water or something. Some soda. Yeah, I don't. I don't either. Nah, we're not playing that game. Anymore. We're not playing that game because mix. Nope. 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 <laughs> we're not playing that game. Weed wolf. He's gonna be like lake. weed wolf shots. Nope. Nope. Not playing that shit. Oh, we know a friend who can make a drink called weed wolf. There you go. We're wolf piss. Let's Master see. Shake, where are you, sir? There Master we go. Is coming on scary snobs soon too. <laughs> Make it just for you. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Oh, man. But we're going to wrap this one up, people. Make sure you please check out all the links in the description. That's all of our links, including the link to this film we just reviewed. Um, Have a great night. I'll see you in your nightmares. Peace. Integrators, holler at me. And uh, be nice to each other. Simple as that. Mm-hmm. <laughs>